Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be creating a simple walk animation for our character. I'm going to start by splitting the view in two so that I can have a animation window open at the same time. So I'm going to left click drag on these little diagonal lines up in the top right here. And this will let me drag out a separate window. And I'm going to change the editor type to dope sheet and change the mode here to action editor. I'll then click to create a new action and I'll call this action my walk. I'll also press this F key to make sure that that action gets saved. And we can then go into pose mode on our armature. Now I've created this little reference sheet showing the five main poses of our walk, starting with the contact pose, then the down pose, the passing pose, the up pose, and finally the reverse contact pose. So let's begin by creating our first contact pose. So from side view, I'm going to grab one of these IK bones and just bring the leg forward a little bit on the Y axis. And I'll also rotate it so that the foot is pointing up. And then I'll grab the hip bone and just move this down on the Z axis until the heel of the foot is touching the ground and until the leg also has a slight bend. We can then also bring this other leg back, I'll rotate the foot a bit and rotate the toes so that they're sort of flat with the ground. All right, something like that. I'd also like to grab the hips and just rotate the whole body forward slightly so that the character is leaning a little bit into the walk. And I'll rotate the head back just to keep the eyes uh, facing straight forward. I'll then go into front view, and here we can see that the legs are spread quite far apart. So I want to uh, bring them in a little bit on the x-axis. But I want to be careful that I move uh, both legs in by the same amount. So I'm going to pay attention to the number down at the bottom left of the screen. You can see how that changes as I move this in. And so it looks like I'm moving it in about negative 0 0.0555. So let me actually just type in negative 0 0.055 and I'll enter that. And then I'll grab the other one and this will be moving in the positive x direction. So I'll press G, X, and 0 0.055. All right, I'll then pose the arms. So I'll bring this in a little bit closer to the body. And I'm going to loosen the hand a bit, like so. And this arm is on the same side as the forward leg, so it's going to be rotated back at this point. And I'll maybe rotate the shoulder back a little bit as well, like so. All right, and I'll just copy those bones, press Control c and shift Control v to paste it over onto the other side. Uh, of course, in this case, the shoulder will be rotated forward. Something like that. All right, and maybe want to press R twice to enter trackball rotation, and just swing the arm and the hand in front of the body a little bit. Now, we need to think about the rotation of these three bones here. So because this leg is currently forward, the hips are going to be rotated in this direction away from the currently forward leg. But because this arm is forward at the moment, the chest is going to be rotating along with it in that direction. So let's grab this hip bone, and I'll press R and then Z, and I'm just gonna hold down Shift to make the rotation uh, quite gradual. We'll just rotate this a little bit, like so. Then I'm going to grab the spine bone, and this is going to rotate counter to that, so that it sort of remains forward. And then the chest bone will be rotating with the arms, like so. Just a little bit, like that. Now, the neck is going to try and keep the head uh, as stable as possible, so I'm going to rotate that back, uh, just so that it tries to remain pointing forwards. All right, all of that rotation has uh, changed the arms a little bit, so I'm just going to tweak the pose slightly, bring it a little bit further away from the body. Something like that, I think, is fairly good for our first pose. So I'm going to select all of the bones. Then I just want to make sure that the playhead, which is this green line here, is on the first frame. So I can press shift left arrow to jump to frame one. And then with the cursor over the 3D view, I'm going to press I to bring up the insert keyframe menu. And I'm going to insert keyframes for the location and rotation of all of the selected bones. Now, to save having to deal with that pop-up menu every time, we can just set our keyframe type here to location and rotation. 
and then when we press I, it will automatically insert frames for location and rotation. Alright, I now want to create the reverse contact pose, so I'm just going to press Ctrl C, uh, once again with the mouse over the 3D view, because when you're working with a split view, you do have to be careful where the mouse is when you're pressing these shortcuts, because shortcuts mean a different thing in the dope sheet than they do in the 3D view a lot of the time. So Ctrl C to copy the pose, and then this is going to be a 12 frame walk animation. So I'm going to skip ahead 12 frames to frame 13, and I'll press Shift Control V to paste the flip pose, and press I to insert keyframes for that. Since our animation is only 13 frames long, let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. So you can use the mouse wheel to zoom, and middle mouse drag to move the view around. All right, so that's a little bit better. And we can scroll through here to get a feel for our animation, or we can just press Alt-A to actually play it. Now, currently it doesn't look terribly interesting, so let's come to our middle frame, frame 7, and create the passing position. So in this pose, the leg that was forward, so the character's left leg here, is going to be sort of directly below the body, and it's going to be flat with the ground, so I'll press Alt-R to clear the rotation, and just bring that down on the Z-axis here. And I'll also clear the rotation on the toes. The back leg will just be sort of swinging past at this point. And I'll clear the rotation on the toes there as well. And the hips are going to be a tiny bit higher up, something like that. Alright, I'll select all of the bones and press I to insert a keyframe once again. And that's starting to look a little bit more interesting. We'll now go on to frame 4, which is of course halfway between our first contact pose and the passing position, and here we'll have our down pose. So in this pose, the front foot is going to be down on the ground, the hips are going to be at their lowest point in the walk, something like that maybe, and this leg is going to be still back, and the toes are going to be just about ready to leave the ground. I'll select all the bones, press I to insert a frame, and let's play through that. It's looking okay. I'll then go to frame 10 uh, for our up pose. So for this pose, I want to bring the hips up a little bit on the z-axis, like so. And I'll flatten this foot out a bit, something like that. I to insert a keyframe. And let's have a look. So I think that's looking quite nice. Let's just go into front view and have a look from there. To get a proper idea of what it looks like though, we're going to need to actually uh, animate the second step. Now, since the second step is of course just a mirror image of the first step, we thankfully don't have to animate it by hand. Uh, what we'll do is first make sure that all of the keyframes are selected here in the dope sheet, so they should all be highlighted in orange. If they aren't, then it's as simple as pressing A. And we also want to make sure that all of the bones here in the dope sheet summary are selected as well. Uh, so when they're selected, they will be highlighted in white, as mine currently are. So to select them, you just uh, put your mouse over the dope sheet summary and press A. So now I've deselected mine, obviously, but I can press A once again to select them. And then with the mouse over the dope sheet view, I'll press Control C to copy all of those keyframes. And then when we paste them, it's going to paste around the playhead. So I'll make sure the playhead is here on frame 13. And then I'll press Shift, Control, V, and it's now pasted in uh, all of the reverse keyframes. So, our animation now ends on frame 25, uh, but frame 25 is of course just the same as frame 1, so we actually want our animation to end on frame 24, and then loop back to frame 1. So I'm going to set the end frame here to 24, and I can then press Alt-A to play the animation. And here we can see our chap walking. I'll go into side view and have a look here. And I think it's looking relatively okay. All right, now there's just a little bit of tweaking that I want to do. So before I go and make any modifications, I want to delete the second half of the animation that we copied over so that we're only making changes to the first half uh, just to avoid any duplicate work. And then once we've done that, we can go and copy the changes over once again. So... I want to delete these last four columns of keyframes, 
So I'm going to shift right click on the uh, top keyframe over here to deselect that whole column and then I'll press X and delete keyframes. The first thing I'd like to do is just have this front foot sort of slap down on the ground a little bit faster to help emphasize the weight of the character. So currently it's taking three frames to become level with the ground. So uh, what I'm going to do is come onto frame two here and make it almost already level with the ground and maybe have the toes trailing behind a little bit. All right, I'll select those two bones I've changed and insert a keyframe for them. And then on frame three, uh, the IK bone is going to be completely flat, so I'll press Alt-R, and the toes can still be trailing behind. I'll insert a frame. Hmm, maybe the toes should actually be flat as well at this point, so I'll change that. Okay, and then I'd like to apply the same floppy toe idea to this other toe as it's as the foot is sort of being dragged forward the toe can maybe bend back a little bit so i'm going to add a keyframe on the toe here uh, where it's just being lifted off the ground and on the next frame it can maybe be bent back a little bit like so and i'll make it still bent here on frame seven and then it slowly straightens out by frame ten all right we can perhaps apply the same idea to the hands. So as the arm rotates back, the hands can sort of trail behind a little bit, like so. So I'll insert a keyframe on that, and insert a keyframe on this. So hopefully that'll make it look just a little bit less rigid. So I now want to go ahead and uh, get my second step back. So I'm going to press A to select all of the keyframes here. I'll hover over the dope sheet summary and press A to select all of those. And then Control C, put my playhead on frame 13 and Shift Control V. And let's now play this. All right, I'll hide the bones so we can get a proper view of our character here. And I'd say this is looking fairly okay. Of course, I encourage you to continue tweaking things to your heart's content, but I'm going to be stopping here. In the next episode, we'll be doing some more animation, uh, in particular creating a run cycle. So until then, cheers.